welcome to InfoHub. In our headlines, President reiterates commitment to teachers' development as 468 graduate from CPCE. Sovereign Wealth Fund closer to reality. U.S. 10 million received from CGX Energy on the previous government should have been reflected in consolidated fund, says Finance Minister Jordan. And trade is increasing between Guyana and Canada. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. Now for the details. President reiterates commitment to teachers' development as CPC graduates 468. Sunil Williams has the details. A new teachers are pivotal to realizing the aspiration of quality education, of building a cohesive nation, a nation of one people, a nation with one destiny. New teachers are the foundations of our public education system. Without you, we cannot achieve our aim of quality education. This was the endorsement given by President David Granger this morning to the graduates of the Cyril Potter College of Education. The head of state said that his administration has been working assiduously to ensure that educators are given the very best opportunities. It is my administration's policy to ensure that teachers have the tools to be efficient in their profession, to be effective in the classroom. We will continue this effort to support our teachers, and I will urge that we work cooperatively, collaboratively, in order to solve the problems in our education system. The president said after traveling across the country, he had several measures implemented to boost the education system, including resident and non-resident training stipends increase and the donation of school buses and boats. I've done so because I feel that students must be comfortable in their accommodation. They must be confident in their studies and they must be educated in an environment which is conducive to academic achievement. The best graduating student was Narissa Manru. Zanil Williams reporting for InfoHub. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Carl Greenwich, is the latest to discredit claims that there was secrecy and illegality surrounding the signing bonus the government received from ExxonMobil. Here's Tiffany Rodius. Minister Carl Greenwich said he had advised the president to put aside money for the legal team to defend Guyana's territorial integrity as it awaits a decision from the United Nations Secretary General on the resolution of the Guyana-Venezuela controversy. More specifically, he asked that the sum received, 50 million of the sum received by the government from the ExxonMobil exercise be earmarked for that purpose. It was also agreed that 3 million US dollars be set aside for the funding of urgent training of Guyanese in needed skills uh, such as engineering and petroleum geology. Guyana is preparing to defend its territorial integrity against Venezuela in the International Court of Justice, pending the Secretary General's decision. Minister Greenwich echoed President David Granger's statement that the non-disclosure of the signing bonus was due to the national security implications. The very manner of disclosure of the information also demonstrates just how porous our system is as regards confidentiality. Mr. Speaker, given the importance for which the funds were to be used and its implications for national security, neither the President nor the Ministry of Foreign Affairs saw any merit in advertising the matter. In fact, so great was the concern that only those that needed to know were informed as to the purpose of the deposit. Additionally, the minister noted that Section 37.2 of the FMNA Act makes provision for the holding of the monies outside of the consolidated fund. The section provides for public monies to be held in extra budgetary funds, deposit funds, etc. until they are credited to the consolidated fund. In 2016, ExxonMobil paid U.S. $18 million into a government account at the Bank of Guyana. 
Signing bonuses are common in petroleum agreements as part of the total financial agreement. The finance minister has said that once the funds are activated for its intended use, the foreign currency will be sold to the Bank of Guyana, increasing the bank's reserves, after which the bank will credit the consolidated fund with the equivalent in Guyana dollars. A supplementary budget will then be brought to the National Assembly before the monies are actually released. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Finance Minister Winston Jordan says the U.S. $10 million purportedly paid by Canadian oil company CGX Energy directly to the state's lawyers in a maritime boundary dispute between Guyana and Suriname under the previous administration should have been recorded in the public accounts. Here is this report. Finance Minister Winston Jordan explained that the U.S. $10 million received from CGX Energy under the previous administration should have been reflected on the foreign inflows and when spent on their current expenditure. He noted that the U.S. $18 million sign-in bonus received from ExxonMobil is in a special account at the Bank of Guyana since it is allocated for a specific purpose, quite different from what the former government did. Whenever that special purpose is activated, the monies will go into the consolidated fund. It will force go to the consolidated fund. We will come to the parliament here and get a supplementary budget to pay whoever we have to pay, whether it's lawyers, map drawers, researchers, whatever, by way of consultancy services. So it will come back out, pass out back through um, our estimates, okay? So when the money is going into the consolidated fund, the actual foreign currency will be sold to Bank of Guyana. That will increase the Bank of Guyana's reserves. Minister Jordan emphasized that the process for the expending of the U.S. $80 million signing bonus will be a transparent and accountable one, unlike what obtained under the previous administration with the U.S. $10 million received from CGX Energy. Think about it. If you didn't get the $10 million, then Guyana would have to find $10 million to pay the lawyers, and Guyana would have been $10 million poorer. But instead, we were $10 million richer because we didn't have to go into our reserves to find money to pay the liars. So I will once tell Mr. Jaglio, he has to be careful when he's talking about the accounts of Guyana. Whether CGX Energy had a vested interest in settling the maritime boundary dispute or not, the finance minister is maintaining that it was on behalf of the government. Hence, the money should have been placed in the public purse. The government has been receiving support from the Commonwealth Secretariat and its Oceans and Natural Resources Advisory Division with the drafting of laws for the establishment of the institutions and fiscal rules for the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Alexis Rodney has the details. Ministry of Natural Resources Rafael Trotman today said that the government is moving closer towards the setting up of the fund. He spoke with InfoHub after giving closing statements at the workshop for the review of the preliminary draft natural resource legislation at the Marriott Hotel. We just continued, uh, concluded a workshop where we more or less now settled on the framework for the Sovereign Wealth Fund and uh, today was just to wrap that up and the next step would be to take the bill to cabinet and then hopefully take it uh, and by the end of the first quarter of 2018 to the, the, the people for them to comment as well. Economic Advisor Oceans and Natural Resources Division of the Commonwealth Secretariat Dr. Daniel Wild said he is impressed that the government is establishing a sovereign wealth fund this early in the process even before there is any substantial production. The fact that the government here has had the foresight um, to look into the long term and put the law and the institutions and the fiscal rules in place well before commercial production really should be commended. Dr. Wilder said that the team now has a solid draft which will see the realization of the three objectives of the fund. These include short-term stabilization, substantial intergenerational saving, and having enough money for the long-term economic development and its ongoing spending commitment. Alexis Rodney for InfoHub. Delicia Haynes now tells us that stakeholders in the health sector were this morning briefed on the importance of having safe and quality pharmaceutical drugs on the local market. The Public Health Ministry, in collaboration with PAHO, WHO and CARICOM through the Caribbean Regulatory System, CRS, are working to build Guyana's capacity to procure safe pharmaceutical drugs. Government Analyst Food and Drug Department Director Marlon Cole said that the government recognizes the challenges it faces in the registration of quality pharmaceutical drugs locally. The Ministry of Public Health, those who are responsible for procurement, those who are responsible for drugs at the Georgetown Public Hospital, were or are invited to ensure that they 
are being are sensitized as it relates to the requirement, the support, the function, and capacity of the CRS. Senior Technical Officer of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, Dr. Princess Osborne, said that the CRS does not replace the quality assurance mechanisms in any country, but works as a supportive body. The products we register presently are all either pre-qualified by the WHO, which is a stringent, which you could regard as a stringent regulatory authority, or they have been registered by other stringent regulatory authorities, which we call reference authorities. So the fact that we are using these reference authorities gives a double assurance that once a product has been registered by the CRS, that it is safe, if it's, it's efficacious, and it is going to conform to the quality that is established. According to Dr. Osborne, ensuring the prevention of access to defective pharmaceutical drugs is far less expensive than having to cure a country that has fallen sick. For Info Hub, Delicia Haynes. Child Care and Protection Agency programs meets targets set dealt with 3,324 reported child abuse cases by the end of October. Here's Sadiqa Thorne. This disclosure was made by CPA's Director Anne Green during the agency's annual staff conference on Tuesday. Green explained that the reported 3,324 child abuse cases in 2017 are an increase when compared to the same period in 2016, when 3,294 cases were reported. These figures have much to do with our, with our multimedia child abuse awareness campaign and preventive programs. I'm happy to report that the child abuse multimedia awareness campaign grew in prominence this year. Likewise, the special parenting program has exceeded the target set, and great strides were made with the prevention of teen pregnancy and empowerment programs. The agency also provided alternative care for 167 children in 2017 and prevented the separation of 2,851 children from their families. In 2017, the CPA continued to build partnerships with key stakeholders and non-governmental organizations. It also sought to build the capacity of parents for their child-wearing role, raise the level of child abuse awareness of the populace, and empowered adolescents and teens to prevent early sexual activities. Sinega Thorne for InfoHub. There has been an increase in the bilateral commercial relationship between Guyana and Canada as the former has become that country's largest merchandise trading market. So says Canadian High Commissioner Lillian Chatterjee. Zanil Williams joins us again. Merchandise trade has increased from $297 million in 2015 to $703 million in 2016. Guyana is currently Canada's largest merchandise trading market within CARICOM, and Canada is now Guyana's top destination for exports. Our commercial relationship is growing and will continue to grow because we are a natural partner. The Canadian High Commissioner noted that local businesses stand to benefit from green technology and clean energy initiatives from Canada as a result of a recently signed MOU. This agreement is between the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Newfoundland and Labrador Environmental Industry Association. So hopefully we can work with Guyanese private sector to share some solutions here. Guyana is poised for an exciting phase of economic development with an oil and gas industry on the horizon. Chatterjee's remarks were made at the GECCI's annual awards dinner. Last night, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure was awarded for its excellence in public service, while Eldorado Offshore and GTT were awarded Businesses of the Year. Zanil Williams reporting for InfoHub. As the holidays activities move into full gear, several ministries and agencies are pitching in to do their part to spread Christmas cheer. Here's our final report from Seneca Thorne. The children and staff of the Ptolemy Reed Rehabilitation Center were entertained by the staff and members of the Ministry of Legal Affairs during the facility's annual Christmas party on Wednesday evening. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Basil Williams told the gathering that it was an honor to celebrate the festive holiday with them, particularly since the center is observing its 50th anniversary. He also commended the staff for their services. The level of commitment of the staff 
as they seek to improve the lives of those who they serve, is deserving of greater recognition and commendation. The children were entertained with gifts and treats and a melody of Christmas carols sung by the ministry staff. Rehabilitation officer in charge of the Ptolemy Reed Rehabilitation Center, Cynthia Massey, thanked the ministry for spreading Christmas cheers with the children. Meanwhile, the senior citizens of the Millie St. Greaves Memorial Senior Citizens Residence, Uncle Eddie's Home, Archer's Home, Byer Senior Citizens Home, and St. Thomas More Home were entertained during the National Library's 50th Library Link Christmas program. Sydney Thorne for Info Hub. Thanks for watching. Connect with us 24 7 on our website and social media. Goodbye.